Heavenly God, we thank you for a new day, for a fresh start, for a fresh portion of your spirit to be poured out from heaven and upon us, your children. We invite your Holy Spirit to be present here with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. morning. Let's continue our worship this morning as we sing, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues. of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. the peace as a sign of welcoming. All right, I would invite you to make your way back to your seats as I share some of the ways that we can do life together this week. The first thing out of the gate I want you to know is if you're interested in serving Holy Communion in our church, I'll be conducting a training right after the third service today. It'll only take about 15 or 20 minutes, so I invite you here where we'll have training in our sanctuary. That's uh, for all communion servers churchwide. Um, Also, it's Appreciation Month. We're just, we love to honor and celebrate and appreciate people around here, right? So it's Staff Appreciation Month this month. And so if you're on staff, would you stand up, please? If you're on staff, could you help me by starting to appreciate these people? Aren't they wonderful? Uh, we can't do, you may sit, we wouldn't be as organized and as effective in ministry if it weren't for these fine folks. And we've got the best, the best in all of ministry. Amen. We thank you all for that. Um, Also, Campus Work Day, October 14th. Please save the date. By the way, one more thing from trustees. Tuesday, the building keys will no longer work here because the locks have been changed. Uh, We are upgrading uh, to a pad system. If you have not filled out a form requesting access, ooh, you are pushing the line with Dwayne. So don't do that. Go to Megan, get a form, fill it out, and he'll program and make sure that you can have access to whatever it is that you need. That's 
Tuesday, the clock is tick, tick, ticking. <laughs> also, remember, next Sunday, we have a new member luncheon at 12 o'clock in the fellowship hall. If you're a new member or if you ha- uh, are considering membership at, Bl- at uh, Blackwater, you want to be sure that you're at that luncheon. Uh, we have a prayer service that uh, our own Ross Ford is going to lead us in on October 24th. That's a Tuesday, so please make sure that you save the date for that. It's at 6 o'clock, and that's just going to be a time away to practice what we preach, which last week was, we are a people of prayer, okay? And so that's a way to offer your prayers. Then we have the Pumpkin Fest. Y'all, we have so much cool stuff going on. The 28th of October Pumpkin Fest and the Oshner Health Fair. If you know of people who would benefit from screenings, uh, non-invasive screenings, uh, cholesterol, medicine checks, and those kinds of things, invite them here on that day because they're complimentary. Um, Also, we have a church-wide combined service on the 29th that'll be a massive celebration. It's one service here at 10 o'clock in the sanctuary. The pumpkin patch is open, and I'm out of breath. My goodness, that's a lot of good things going on. Amen? I would like to invite our ushers to prepare us to receive this morning's offering, and as they do, I remind you we do that with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the extravagant way in which you love us. Help us now to respond to that love in all the ways that we offer ourselves to you, generously and joyfully. For you, God, you, God, love a cheerful giver. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
pray with me? Dear Lord, we praise you for friendship and family. Thank you for bringing us together today to share a time of praise and worship. The people in our lives bring us so much joy, and we are grateful for time spent in fellowship together. We honor you in all we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. that joy is in your hearts today, dear family. We're reading out of Psalms today, and this should bring you joy. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. 
and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. I'd like to thank the Messer family for the beautiful flowers um, on the altar this morning. And I also want to uh, just say that uh, our prayers certainly go for the people uh, of Israel uh, today. This psalm was written by David, who was expressing his praise and thanksgiving to God, not coincidentally, in a difficult situation. <laughs> And it was written using a technique, a very specific one. It's an alphabetic acrostic. You may or may not know what that is, but what it is is that each verse of it begins with a successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet in which David originally wrote it. Acrostic poems, they were crafted by very highly skilled wordsmiths like David, and they functioned in ancient times as a memory device. You use this sometimes, Terry, with the PDO kids. You know, you teach them acrostically. And it's kind of an everything you need to know technique from A to Z about a specific subject. Let me help you with one from our modern day times. M is for the many things she gave me. Anybody know? O means only that she's growing old. T is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for her heart of purest gold. E is for the eyes with love light shining. R means right and right she'll always be. Put them all together, they spell a word that means the world to me. See, it's acrostic. Psalm 34 is a song just like that, only it's about thanksgiving and deliverance from difficult situations. Today, I want to invite you to step into a story that really intertwines the wisdom of Psalm 34. Imagine yourself walking through a beautiful, vibrant garden. Surrounded by the beauty of God's creation. Put yourself there, here. And as you navigate through this garden, each step you take, each flower that you see, it represents an acrostic letter from the poem of Psalm 34. As you run your fingers across the softness of a radiant red rose, its delicate petals unfolding gracefully, you are reminded of the power in the word psalm, <laughs> the P, or maybe it's praise the Lord at all times. That's how it starts. For even in the midst of trials, God's goodness and faithfulness endures. And as you encounter the sound of gentle water running, its soothing melody harmonizing with nature's own symphony, you reflect on the S. It urges you to seek Peace and to pursue it, to embody the transformative uh, power of Christ's love and, and bring reconciliation to fractured friendships. Moving deeper into the garden, maybe you stumble upon a giant strong oak tree, its branches reaching skyward, symbolizing the strength and stability found in the letter T. Could be tree, or it could be Trust in the Lord. For God is your refuge and fortress, a source of unwavering support amid life's storms. You continue on 
And you get into a clearing, an open field of blooming wild flowers. Their, their vibrant color spreading joy and delight as much as that song from the choir did. And it brings to mind the J, reminding you to joyfully serve the Lord with all your heart. How much of your heart? All of it. Using your unique gifts and talents as well as your resources to bless others. And then finally... You come upon the most beautiful, peaceful spot you can imagine. Mm. Bathed in golden sunlight where you just feel the gentle embrace of God's presence. It represents the G reminding you to give thanks for abundant blessings that God rains down in your lives. And as you immerse yourself in this journey and you connect to the word of God today, let this story become your personal experience. (laughs) Embrace the truth that you are not merely a listener, but an active participant. Allow the words of Psalm 34 to resonate deeply within your soul as you respond to God's invitation to live out the acrostic poem penned by David in your everyday life. May this story be a catalyst for true transformation. May you not walk out of here the same way you entered here. May it invite you into an intimate relationship, one with your loving creator, one that will shape you and engage you and the world around you. And may this journey in the garden of blessing guide all of us to walk in footsteps of Christ as we become living testimonies of the profound impact of God's words. You see, that's what it means to be in the presence of God. That's what it means to offer presence. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for the journey we begin today. May your word Take root in our hearts. May it transform us into vessels of your love, of your peace, and of your gratitude. Help us, O Lord, to walk in the beauty of your acrostic poem each day, embracing the story as our own story. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, the truth is, every single one of us We face difficult situations in life, don't we? Regardless of how old you are, regardless of what you do for a living or what you don't do, despite what grade you're in in school, we all, I can imagine, deal with some sort of personal struggle. And I ask you to consider what that might be for you this morning. Who here is dealing with job insecurity, personal hardships, health crisis? Who here is dealing with failed marriage or family problems or bullies? We all suffer corporately as well, don't we? With such a diverse congregation, I imagine we can all agree that our society issues, heck, even our church issues, are somewhat complex and sometimes hard to solve. We all know that there is more than one way to skin a cat, but sometimes, sometimes we don't agree on how best to skin it. So we argue and we undermine and we strive through the giving and receiving of pain. Underlying all this difficulty are feelings of fear, anxiety, and hopelessness. These feelings are truly universal. You can often sense the hinges of our church, of our community, of our nation, and of our world straining from the weight of division and even isolation for some. And there are typically three players amongst All of those present in our difficulties, there are the afflicted, those who are directly facing the hardships. And maybe you're sitting here this morning and maybe that is you. And then there is the support system. There is that community of relationships that you surround yourself with 
that help to navigate, help you endure such difficult times. And then there's God. There's God whose love is unwavering, whose compassion is endless, who's not concerned really with all of the ways in which we divide ourselves, but rather focused on love, which is what God said it all boils down to. And then coming in hot this morning in our psalm, we have none other than David. David, the shepherd boy turned king, who God described as a man after his own heart. David, who cleverly used his command of the Hebrew language here to express his praise and thanksgiving to God when he was in a difficult situation. See, God gave him the idea to pretend that he was insane in front of the king of Gath as a cunning way to escape this king's grasp. This was likely very connected to David's fleeing from King Saul, who was at the time pursuing him out of jealousy. But the original words here translate best as God plucking David, right, from this hard situation and delivering him to a safe place. Plucking David and delivering him to a safe place. Taking him out of his difficulty and putting him in a place where he was safe. David recalled all of this and then encouraged the listeners of his song to join him in magnifying the Lord and exalting God's name together as David unfolded his personal testimony of how God had answered his cry for help and delivered him from all of his own fear and anxiety. Now, how many of you could use a good deliverance from your own fear and anxiety about right now? See, he started with bless the Lord at all times. How many times? All of them. That means that there is no time when there should not be a blessing of the Lord going on. Remember last week where we talked about prayer? Well, here it is again. Bless the Lord at all times. The reason why you pray unceasingly is because when you pray, you become aware that you are already in the presence of the Lord. It's you that needs to come to that awareness. Not God. God's already there. The idea of David himself being fully present to God and living a life of worship can be heard in David's dependence on God and his trust in God's deliverance. You see, despite the challenging circumstances David was involved in, he chose to focus on God's goodness and God's faithfulness. And he spent his energy on expressing his trust in God through praise and thanksgiving. In other words, he was intentional about being present before God. (laughs) And why should it matter to you? Well, it should matter to you because how many times in your life do you wish you were somewhere other than where you are right now? (laughs) Wishing that someone, somewhere, would show mercy on you and rescue you from the mess that is in your life and take you to a better place. Come on now. Even the advertisers were onto this. Cal gone, take me away. Remember that in the day? What better place is there than the presence of the Lord? Who will show you unbelievable compassion, extend to you undeniable grace upon grace, and offer you an unfailing and extravagant love? There is no better place. Let me help you. How much better would your life be right now if you were just intentionally before God and admitted, Lord, I need you? You see, presence makes the difference. 
It starts with prayer and it continues with the word. That's where the answers are to overcoming all your problems. You see, presence makes the difference. The Bible, it's the key. It's the key to finding hope and comfort and guidance. When you are afraid and you are feeling alone in a situation, reading the word and simply praying it back to God is powerful and transformative. And you know why? Because it puts your crazy, drifting self into alignment with the unchanging, unfailing will of God. Putting yourself in God's presence is to be plucked from your misery and put in a safe place where God can love on you. Prayer. God's word. They're, they're both about establishing God's presence, and there's one more. A nurturing environment in which generations can support one another. The church. The church. It's here, Blackwater. It's here that God's presence is accessible and comforting to all generations. The videos that we share this week within this series are testimonies that demonstrate how people from different generations have found strength and hope in difficult situations. We're going to play one for you right now. Ian, can you cue the video, please? I truly believe there's times, and I've seen it happen in our church, and, and on a personal level and on a, I guess you would call it a church-wide level, you see people come in that you've never seen before. They're visiting, and, and it's almost like you can see in their face that they're hunting for something. This church is really good. <laughs> you can't hardly get in the door. As a matter of fact, it's sort of like going to a, a gauntlet of people because they're going to greet you and they're going to love on you. It's so important that, that we do that to not just the visitors but to everyone because that it, it's that common ground. It's that common ground where you, you know that those people aren't hugging you or saying they love you uh, just to say it. They mean it. And that presence and that comfort and, and that ease to where you say, where you know you can talk to any of them in the church and, and have a conversation and you can walk away and there's not going to be where they think you're doing it for a reason other than that you love them, you know? And it's, if you're not here, you can't share your life with anybody. And that, that presence is, it may make a little difference, may make a big difference, but it's, uh, it's an opportunity that I think, and we, we miss hundreds of them, but it's an opportunity to share God's word and, and our beliefs and what God has promised us to other people and uh, express it through love, uh, not just at the church, but in, in, at the ballparks, at the grocery stores, at the other places. I mean, presence to me doesn't mean just at the church. It's, you have to be present in the world because if, if you're not being present in the world with God's word, then, then you're not opening up God's word to the world. So preach the gospel often and sometimes use words. Yeah. <laughs> and, but it has so much truth to it in that in the grocery store, at the ballpark, whatever, there are opportunities to show God's love by just the actions you have, what you do. Hold the door open for somebody. Somebody's got two things in their hand, you got 30. Go in front of me at the cash register. Uh, those kind of things make a difference that we don't necessarily always think about. And I think we miss that opportunity when we don't in some way re reflect that love to the world around us because there are a lot of people out there that 
maybe have never benefited from what life I've been had with what Kurt just mentioned in our church, the, the love, et cetera. They haven't got it in their life, so we can help them see where God does love them just for the way we treat everybody. Not, don't, you don't have to go out of your way to make that one person that you, oh, let's show them love, but in general, but it makes their day. You know, we both commented at times at the cash register to thank somebody and say, you have a wonderful day as we're walking out in the cash register. Somebody that appreciated me instead of griping about how much it cost or whatever, or you're slow at ringing up stuff. But it's a way that you can make a person's life improved when you let them know you're just a human. God loves you. I think that carries over in that sense that it, it makes their day better and they'll make everybody else's day better. And Our presence here is to is to spread love and to share God's word, not to condemn people, because we think what they're doing is is not what we think they should be doing. And that has, has made a real big impact on me. I mean, I, I really, really do think that the people of the church has changed my, not just my outlook on life, but the way I interact with people. It's, it's, it's just amazing that you can look at people and see their faults and you know they can see your faults and we can look past that and just look at the person. Can you all do me a favor and help me thank Dwayne and Kurt for their testimony? It was just beautiful. I really appreciate you guys and love you very much. See, worship, it's one of the many ways that our church fosters intergenerational connectedness. We do so in mentorship programs like our PDO, like our children's and youth ministry. We do it in the family programming and the after school care that we intend to provide in our new Blackwater Center for Community Enrichment. We do it in small groups, in small groups like The Chosen, like the Women's Bible Study, and like the study on Mark in our church library, among others. How much better would we all be if we would have God just pluck us out from our current situation and put us in a safe place before God? What are your difficult situations? What would change if you put your trust in God's presence instead of taking matters into your own hands? What would change if all the energy you spent on distractions was spent on prayer or being in the word or living a life of worship? How much more praise and thanksgiving would be on your lips? You see, the psalmist is talking to ancient Israel here, but, but this is a living word. It's the living word of God. And so the psalmist is also speaking to a church in the city of Central whose mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ from one generation to the next generation. And David is saying, remain steadfast, Blackwater, in your faith and trust in God's provision. And David is saying, I sought the Lord in times of trouble. And therefore, he is encouraging you to do the same and to cheer one another on in worship and in prayer and to fully offer yourself in your presence to God and to each other. What would change if we spent our time in worship and praise? What would change if God just took us from right where we are and put us in alignment with what God wants us to do and be? We all face challenges and uncertainties but hey, God is a refuge and the source of our strength. The Blackwater, find comfort in God's presence today. Offering yourself fully to God aligns with the psalmist's exhortation to bless the Lord and to have God's praise continually on our lips. God's deliverance, it inspires us all to offer every aspect of our lives. God's deliverance, it inspires us to offer our whole selves, trusting in the Lord's provision and being obedient in all that we have. 
My dear friends, hope and trust and praise are all things you don't want to miss out on because there is no greater life than one of worship where we're all in and we're rallied around Jesus Christ. And whatever you do, as you find encouragement and wisdom in God's holy word, pass it on. Others need it too. I wrote us a new poem for our time and our place. Pre is for the way God goes before us. S is for salvation that is mine. E is for each blessing that God gives us. N is for the newness in our mind. C is for the care we show each other. E is for our everlasting life. Put it all together, it spells presence. God's presence will replace all of our strife. Would you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we come before you today as, as a diverse congregation seeking your presence and guidance in the midst of our difficulties. We recognize that life's challenges can often feel overwhelming, that our burdens make us weary. But God, today we place our trust in you, knowing that you're the source of our strength and of our comfort and peace. In this moment of prayer, we surrender our worries, God, our anxieties, our troubles into your loving hands. We release the weight of our burdens, God, knowing that you are more capable of carrying them than we are. Help us to truly let go. Help us to let go of the need for control. Help us to find solace in the truth that you are in control of all things. As we surrender, we ask for a divine peace that surpasses all understanding per your promise. Allow your comforting presence to engulf us and bring calm, God, to our restless hearts. Speak, O oh Lord, your words of assurance, reminding us that we are never alone in our struggles. Assure us, O oh God, of your unfailing love. Remind us, O oh God, that we are precious in your sight. Lord, we know that amidst the storms of life, you are our shelter. Surround us, O oh God, with your loving arms. Protect us from the winds of doubt and fear and despair. Clothe us with the armor of our faith, that we may stand firm in the face of adversity, knowing that you are our refuge and our strength. God, in this church, unite us as one body, bound by the common thread of faith, May we support and encourage one another in times of difficulty, generously extending a helping hand to those in need. God, teach us to be compassionate and empathetic so that we may share the burdens of others and lighten their load. Grant us, O oh Lord, the wisdom to discern your will and the courage to follow you where you lead. And as we surrender our difficulties to you, open our hearts to receive. Show us your path of righteousness, that we may walk our days in your ways and experience the fullness of life in you. We are grateful, O oh God, grateful for your presence and your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. And that's the extravagant of God's word and God's love for you. And now it's your turn to respond to God's great love. Would you stand as we sing our song? of discipleship. The prayer kneelers are open for prayer. You may come and touch the waters to remember your baptism.
You may come to me and I'll pray with you. If you want to join, this is your time. Whatever God is leading you to. And now, people of God, receive this benediction. May the God, who is your comforter and your redeemer, go with you. And may you be present and aware of God. And may the overflow of God's presence bless the lives of those around you. In Christ's name, amen.